AM 590, KXSP Omaha's ESPN Radio. It's time for the Metro's only racing talk show. The Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. Now, here's Dan Taylor and Buddy Ray. This is Jack Roush, and you're listening to The Front Stretch. Good morning, race fans, and welcome to The Front Stretch, presented by Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs, online at joeskarting.com. That's karting with a K. Get to Joe's today. Boy, look at me rhyming like I know what I'm doing. 23rd Avenue and Council Bluffs, online at joeskarting.com. That's karting with a K again. Fast-paced white-knuckle racing. You really can't go wrong with Joe's Karting and Council Bluffs. It's the only indoor karting facility, and as far as I know, it's really the only karting facility in the Midwest. Am I right, guys? I don't think I know of uh, any other ones around here, no? Yeah, I don't think so either. I think they've all gone the way of the dodo bird. Uh, You heard the voices in there, Stan Caesar, Andrew Kaziski. It's going to be a bit of a wacky, weird show today. Uh, The night we recorded... Bud was on the mend, had some tooth surgery. Uh, I don't know if he's got any teeth left, but we'll find out next week when he gets back into the into the swing of things. So I asked Stan Caesar to join me tonight because we're going to be interviewing uh, Steve Kinzer for an interview coming up in a couple of weeks that we're going to play on February 9th of the Legends of the Dirt series. And then I asked Andrew, I figured, you know what, what a better time to get you back in here and talk about how your season went and just kind of get you back in the studio for one more time. It feels good to be back, definitely. Uh, it's nice to have you. And Stan, thanks so much for taking time out of your night to join us. No problem. Uh, glad to be here, and, and I could say uh, I got a chance to see Andrew race a couple times this year. I think he had a pretty good season, a little up and down at times, but uh, when it was on the upside, he was awful fast this year. I think he got the going back up when he got away from me and Bud. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a bad influence on him. He's a bad influence yeah. on a lot of people. That's why he's toothless now. <laughs> Uh, so we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, let's uh, turn one. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about some NASCAR news, some dirt track news, that kind of stuff. I want to get your guys' opinion on Austin Dillon taking over the three for Cup Series. Turn two, we're going to talk with Kirk Westring, formerly of Albion Raceway. He purchased it and now and, and retitled it Boone County Speedway. Pretty much said that... Everyone called it that anyway, so that's what they're just going to rename it. Well, that's what everybody remembered it as, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I, we had a good conversation about that, too. So we'll talk to him in turn two. And then turns three and four, the Legends of the Dirt Series continues with John Anderson. Bud will be back in the studio then because we recorded the John Anderson interview a couple of weeks ago. And we'll talk to John about his career and uh, his impact on Dirt Series. So before we do all, before we get to all of that, let's talk about probably the biggest news of the week was the announcement on Wednesday that uh, Austin Dillon, the formal announcement, everyone pretty Pretty much knew it. It was the worst kept secret in the world uh, that Austin Dillon is going to be coming up to the uh, Sprint Cup Series, taking over the three. Uh, can I get your guys' opinions on that? Any conflict uh, for that? Anything like that? Well, not so much on my part. I think. I mean, you know, the numbers out there. Uh, Eric Almirola is driving the forty three car mm-hmm. for Richard Petty Motorsports, and and uh, Richard Childress basically had number three before Dale Earnhardt even start driving it right. you know and uh back when richard was driving himself and uh you know i i think i think it's a great deal and and you know regardless of what kevin harvick thinks or whatever uh <laughs> the dylan boys they've really they've they they might they might have had a few doors opened open for them but i'll tell you what they were prepared when they got the opportunity uh, those guys are will men you know they they've they've came up through the dirt track ranks and everything and and uh they're they're not somebody that just just had it handed to them. They've 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 yeah. worked hard, I think, to to get to the ability that they have. I kind of agree with that same way. I I really don't like it. I'm a huge Dale Earnhardt Senior fan. I'm pretty young, so I didn't get to see a lot of his races. But I, I really. But Stan also brought to my attention the 43. I forgot the 43 wasn't. I wish they'd retire both them numbers. And honestly, the 48 should never be ran again after Jimmy mm-hmm. Johnson's done with it. But you know, it's it's hard to do. I, I don't think they retire numbers in NASCAR. I just wish they would have got rid of the number three for sure. It's well, a slippery slope because there's only 99 available numbers. Well, would that would that put you back in the 2X then and out of the 53? <laughs> if they retired the 53, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> they could have retired the 53 after Bob was done. There you go. You know, you know it's, it's kind of funny. Before today's press conference, I was on Andrew's side of it. I felt like the three should be the number that be retired strictly for the reason that the man died driving it and made it legendary. Now, obviously... Richard Petty made the 43 legendary. Darrell Waltrip made the 11 legendary. There's so many drivers out there that made their number legendary, but this isn't 
the stick and ball games where where it's you can retire the the eighty eight for Dallas Cowboys. You know, the difference but, being that Richard Childress drove the number three. Yeah, and and Earnhardt when he when he raced for Bud Moore, he was in the fifteen. Before that, he drove the seventy seven for Johnny Ray when he made his debut. You know, yeah. What changed it? What changed my opinion was the press conference on Wednesday when I was listening to it, and Richard Childress said, and I'm I'm trying to quote him best of my memory, and everyone knows my memory is horrible, so it's a bad thing to try to do, but. He said Dale would want to see that three back on a track. He wouldn't want to see it retired. And there's a lot of Dale Earnhardt fans out there that are going to want to see this three out there. And I, you know what? To be honest with you, I feel sorry for Austin Dillon because that guy is going to be held to a standard. I mean, it's like trying to fill. It's like Joey Logano trying to fill the twenty for Tony Stewart immediately after he left. Kevin Harvick did a great job filling that ride, and he has over the last how many years he's been at Richard Childress Racing, filling in from when Dale passed away. Uh, but Austin's going to be held to a standard, which I think he's one of few drivers that I think he's got a chance to do it. Yeah, I, th- I think he'll do. I think he'll do a good job. Uh, other uh, news and notes that they were testing today at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Some of the changes that they uh, they made to uh, to the Gen Six car for the mile and a half speedways. Uh, saw some pretty good times. It's a pretty good racing on Wednesday. So uh, that was just some of the other stuff. Let's let's talk a little bit about a dirt series. Uh, Andrew, you got an idea what you're doing for 2014 yet? Uh, not quite yet. I'm actually as this show airs, I'll be in uh, Indianapolis at the PRI show. Probably the same thing as last year. The SLMR series is absolutely, I think. I really like the MLRA series of Tours of Midwest, but the SLMR Tours Nebraska and Iowa, mm-hmm. and I really think that's the most fundable, funnest thing to go do is travel to 14 different tracks. So I'm going to do that again and probably run I-80. Okay. And you're going to try to run any other track on a weekly basis? or No, not just... on a weekly basis. The SLMR, some MLRA, and then, of course, weekly I-80. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna... kind of I'm kind of have to go to – no, I don't have to go. I like <laughs> going there. They have my class. I have to go there. I'm pretty excited about you guys coming to Crawford County. Uh, I think I saw July 24th. I don't know the exact date, but yes, once I saw that, I thought of you – the yeah. exact same I'm way. excited about that. You guys have to. I asked Joe, I said, am I going to have to call that race? And he goes, well, I'm not bringing an announcer. <laughs> I said, go. maybe I'll get Stan Caesar to come down. He's a much better announcer than me. <laughs> I'll, I'll come up and help you, and if it runs long, end of the 25th, we'll go celebrate my birthday. There you go. Uh, there we go. I stay, are you going to, you're coming down, if we get the 360s again, you're going to be able to join us? Yeah, most, most certainly. I'll be there with the Nebraska 360s if they're there, and uh, I, I think it's great news that you're going to be uh, having the 305s this year. You know, it's going to be a growing, kind of a growing thing, but uh, I'll tell you, the race that was there last year was an awesome race. Oh, yeah. And I I, I, I went back. Uh, Facebook's doing this interesting thing now that it's the end of the year. If you look on your main profile, it gives you a, review, a year in review. And I, I saw pictures and posts of that night. And I saw, again, I found pictures of Stu Snyder's car on my on my phone and on my Facebook page. And, God, that was a, that was a frightening night and such an exciting night. Well, After we knew he was okay. Yeah. It was very exciting to watch that racing. Lucky grind, and the amazing thing was they had some great video of that we were yeah. we were privy to see that video up in the booth before anybody else got a chance to see it. You know, once we once we knew for sure that Stu uh, came out of that deal. But uh, matter of fact, I talked to Stu uh, yesterday. Oh, really? uh, getting a midget ready for the Chili Bowl. Oh, he's, he yeah. is racing again. I thought yeah. he'd re- hung up the steering well, wheel. He's 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 unofficially <laughs> retired, but but uh, he is getting a midget ready for the Chili Bowl, and uh, he's run up, I think, as high as the C or D main down there before. Wow. So that, that'll be interesting. Be uh, fun. Be good, good to see him again uh, out there on the track. I hope hope I can catch some video of that. Uh, you're going to be tuning with the 360s. Anything else you're doing this uh, for 2014? You got in well, the works? I'll be, I'll be doing ASCS Midwest Series, and mm-hmm. and uh, whenever I get a chance, uh, the Nebraska 360 group, and then of course every Saturday at Eagle Race. You're a busy, busy man. Well, I used to be busier, but uh, I've kind of cut back to <laughs> cut back to one night a week uh, on a regular basis. Uh, gosh, there were there were years ago when I was at Denison, your place up there every Friday, and Harlan every Saturday, and then uh, I eighty every Sunday, and wow. before that, sunset every Sunday. Plus, did some Bush All Star Tour stuff, you know, here and again, here and there. But uh, it was, you know, it, it's it's a. Did I mention I love my job? <laughs> It's hard he's, not he's to the love voice this. of the speedway. Yeah, he's he got to be there. He is yeah, absolutely, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, Sunset Speedway because we've made a slight change to our tentative. Our, well, again, we call it tentative. It is nothing set in stone with mm-hmm. this, but uh, had an issue getting a hold of one of our legends of the Dirt Series. So instead, we've decided to scrap that and not do uh, 11 drivers. We're going to do 10 drivers, and we're going to do two different shows for the Walk Down Sunset Lane, which you can join us January 22nd. That's a Wednesday night at Quaker Steak and Lube in Council Bluffs. It's going to be a two-hour recording. And we were talking about it before. 
I was anticipating probably about an hour and a half. I sat down with Craig Kelly, and he goes, buddy, hour and a half is going to be the scra- – that's going to be one segment. <laughs> hour and a half would fly by, I <laughs> yeah. think. You know, so, when, you, when you try to put that many years of, of – you know, of everything, of yeah. stories and <laughs> yeah. experiences. And, you know, he's he jokingly said, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to like me doing this because there's a lot of drivers that I sent to the back that still don't like me for it. <laughs> Craig, did, did, no, Craig sent somebody to the back? No. <laughs> We we had a really good conversation uh, over lunch last Friday. So uh, yeah, and so instead we're going to do the first show is going to air January twenty sixth, and it's going to be the early years. So it's going to be when you were growing up at Sunset Sand. Was there the first uh, Sunday afternoon race back in nineteen fifty seven? Yeah, and uh, was about as tall as the guardrail. But uh, <laughs> I've been there quite a few times since then, all the way up to the final sunset two thousand. Uh, and then uh, we're going to do a second show. It's going to be there in the next weekend, February 2nd. It's going to be called The Lighter Years. And that's going to be focusing mostly on about the 80s when Craig Kelly's family purchased the track and Craig really started working at it and doing promoting and, and flagging and stuff like that. So two different shows, but both shows are going to be recorded on the exact same night. So I'm actually anticipating we're going to be recording for probably two and a half hours. And then we're going to I'll cut the show up to air on ESPN uh, on the regular time. And then we'll have the full unedited episode. Everything show. If there's a cuss word that's dropped, if there's joking in the background, it'll all go on our uh, internet show, which is on the Joe's Carding YouTube page. So that'll be exciting. Andrew, did you ever you ever get, get any good stories about uh, Sunset? Besides, it felt like I grew up there watching my dad <laughs> race every week. I don't know. It just that that was seriously like the funnest place to go as a kid. I'm so mad I missed out on getting a chance to drive there. But it, between my dad and Kyle Burke every week, and Dave Chase and all the Zeitners, it was just. It, it was different. It, it just it was it was a totally different deal than racing nowadays is. Mm-hmm. Just well, incredible memories back from those days, and that was back when Andrew was only about as tall as the guardrail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys, uh, you know what, we're going to save it for the show. But I got a lot of questions about that track because, unfortunately, I never saw. I've still never seen it. I need to get out there before the show and at least put my eyes on it so I can kind of get a general idea of what what it was like. But uh, from what I understand, there were so many drivers that were just dominant there. Andrew, your grandpa Bob was just nobody could come close to touching him while he was uh, while he was racing that old coupe. There was there was that was back in those days. It was kind of the big four. Uh, he had Bud Burdick, Bill Rick, Jim Wyman, Bob mm-hmm. Kaziski. It was I, if if a guy could bet that four. Parlay that four four place uh, bet every week uh, could have took us to the bank. And uh, Bill Rick is going to be one of them. We're going to have, and according to to, uh, oh, to Craig bet, Kelly, <laughs> according to Craig, I'm going to need a separate show just for Bill. <laughs> so that'll be. I'm very excited about that. Again, it goes it all goes down January 22nd. A Quaker Steak and Lube. Uh, come out and watch. And we're going to have a microphone set up for the fans so you guys can ask questions. I know that uh, Luke Cocker and of Home Pride Companies is wanting to get involved in this. Um, Wayne Q is wanting to get involved in it. So we're going to. There's going to be a lot of different ways this is going to work. But most of all, it's going to be a great time and all of you guys are laughing you know I, we all know what we're in for when we talk about wayne q the sunset outlaw jay cochran <laughs> yep you, you might you might hear the story behind that <laughs> craig, craig says you might want to separate uh luke and i because uh he, he and he doesn't like me very much and, <laughs> and we, so we'll, we'll have to get to the bottom of that story but uh, i heard yeah. a rumor that that craig is bringing a, a fire extinguisher filled with water to, to get even that night <laughs> so that'll all go down january 22nd check out the front stretches facebook page we have an event on the page you can check it out and you can become a fan of it and say you're going and then invite all your friends let's get the word out about this and really show that the uh the sunset it may, it meant something to us and maybe maybe somebody like kirk who just purchased uh boone county speedway will will revive little uh sunset speedway who knows <laughs> Who knows? We can only hope. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back in turn two to talk to Kirk Westering of uh, Boone County Speedway about him taking over the track. We'll be right back here on the front stretch. This is Andrew from Kaziski Auto Parts. Kaziski Auto Parts is an insurance quality used parts supplier that can match your foreign or domestic car or truck needs. If you have a damaged or broke down car or truck, we guarantee a clean and quality part in next day fashion. Kaziski Auto Parts, your neighborhood premium recycle parts supplier. Call any Kaziski Auto Parts salesman today by dialing 402 402- 731-4592 or visit us at 5040 I Street in Omaha. Kaziski Auto Parts. Our quality used parts will match your car or truck's needs. 
Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. We're working the high line into turn two on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Carding. Online at joescarding.com. Hey, y'all. It's Miss Coors Light, and you're listening to the front stretch. Welcome back to the show. We're heading into turn two here on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Carding and Council Bluffs. Online at joescarding.com. That's carding with a K. And we're joined on the phone by Kirk Westering, the new owner and promoter. And uh, I get... Um, uh, Pretty much going to be doing everything at Boone County Speedway, formerly known as Albion Raceway. And I said it wrong again. Boone County Raceway, formerly known as Albion Raceway. Uh, Kirk, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Are you uh, enjoying your December so far? We've had some better days here, but uh, <laughs> it's fairly cold. And we're looking forward to 2014, that's for sure. Yeah, let's talk about that. You, we were talking off air a little bit that uh, you guys decided to rename the track. You bought back the Boone County title. Uh, take me through the process of, of deciding to go to, to Boone County Raceway. Well, um, we had some, uh, I guess, I don't know, the racing community has always known it for at least the last 16 years uh, before last year as Boone County Raceway. So we just kind of decided that as a business decision and uh, from a promoter standpoint, I think the racers always wanted it to be Boone County Raceway. They were going to call it that no matter what. So. <laughs> yeah, I know the uh, I know the way that goes. It, I, I always call it, like uh, I, I do announcing in, in Denison, and I very rarely off the air refer to it as Crawford County Speedway. It's always Denison. And so, yeah, it, uh, it, you can name it whatever you want to, but when drivers and fans just decide, nah, now nah, we're going to call it this, you're kind of stuck, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, th- I thought as a, business, uh, as a business side of things, I think it was better off that we, we went back to the old name. So. Just simply out of curiosity, was there any conversation with any kind of business commerce in Albion since the track is in Albion uh, about the renaming, or was it just kind of a, now everyone pretty much calls it Boone County, so we're just going to go with it? No, um, we I kind of talked to quite a few of the local racers up there, um, got a little bit of feedback as far as uh, that goes. I mean, it wasn't solely just, well, that's what it's been called. The Crone family had run a, a real successful speedway for 16 years up there at Albion as the Boone County Raceway. So I figured if, if we were going to keep on that successful line, we were going to go ahead and rename it back to Boone County Raceway. I see. And, and let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, you're the new owner, Kirk Westring, uh, the new owner of, uh, of what is now Boone County Raceway. Talk about the process of deciding that you were actually clinically insane and you wanted to purchase a track. My wife kind of looked at me funny when I come home and told her that uh, the fair board had approved us for being the new owner and promoter of the Speedway, and she just gave me this look like, are you nuts? Have you lost your mind? Because we've been around the racing industry since uh, 2003, um, where we started four-cylinder racing on the front stretch of US 30 Speedway in Columbus, Nebraska. Hmm. <clears throat> so we, uh, I just, we had done a, the tech officiating up there last year at Albion Speedway for Brian Moult, the last year's promoter. And I was doing the track prep and doing all that kind of stuff anyway, so we just decided that, uh, heck, why not give it a, sh- give it a shot? So. Hmm. What uh, what kind of uh, changes are you looking at uh, for 2014 when the, when the season gets back underway? Do you guys have some changes in mind you're already working on? Well, we've already done the dirt work. We've already brought in 20 loads of new clay into each corner. Mm-hmm. Um, the dirt work's settling over the winter. I think that's a huge plus as far as any time you can get dirt work done early enough before the winter hits and freezes the ground. I think that's a huge deal for us. And We're looking at uh, maybe running the Race Saver 305s, the Nebraska Sprint Series up there two nights next year. That's kind of a new deal for us. Um along with 
our other six classes will run, you know, the limited weight models, IMCA mods, IMCA sport mods, IMCA stock cars, IMCA hobby stocks, and IMCA forest owners. So, so that's kind of what we got going on up there. I think uh, it's just a whole new, a whole new environment um, <laughs> this next year. It's just going to be. I'm all, we're all about the the racing community and keeping keeping the racers coming back up to to Albion, Nebraska, the Boone County Raceway. Yeah, it's uh, I, I hear all about that, and it it it's a challenge that uh, a lot of people thank thankfully are taking on. Uh, that uh, this this sport is alive and and doing well. It has its struggles, but uh, guys like you that are stepping up to the plate and uh, in purchasing tracks are. Uh, are really helping keep it alive. Do you guys have a tentative schedule that you've started to work on, uh, or is it a little too early to talk about that yet? Well, it's a little too early to talk about a full schedule, but um, the last weekend in April and the last Friday in, in April, we'll run a, a practice night, and then uh, we'll start our first night of racing May 2nd. So that's kind of where we're starting starting from anyways. Okay. Um, we're just working on a lot of different things. Uh, adding different classes and things like that as we go. So, and uh, pardon me for not knowing, but uh, Friday night, Saturday night racing, which one? We race on Friday nights. Okay. At Albion. Okay. Uh, it'll be uh, Boone County Raceway under the lights on Friday night. Oh, I like that. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, usually it takes a couple of beers for me to come up with something catchy like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not we, accusing uh, you of anything. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, no, I I worked extremely hard to, to come up with a new slogan and and move it in a new direction up there. So, any um, redesigns to the tracks, uh, anything like that uh, that you can talk about? <clears throat> well, we've cut, we've flattened the track out. It used to be kind of a high bank track. It, it kind of seemed like towards the end of the season, it was kind of always a a hockey puck effect. It would be real flat on the bottom and kind of high banked on the, the middle to the top side. And mm. We knocked about two foot off the top of each corners and, and built up the bottom again so that way we can have a, a racier surface up there. That's my main goal is, is if we can run three, four wide, that's cool. You know, the fans <laughs> love that kind of stuff. That's so. some great stuff. What about some specials? Can you talk to us about any specials you got working on? Maybe something close that you can announce? Well, uh, we're working with uh, Eagle Raceways promoter Roger Hayden with, mm-hmm. for that uh, Nebraska 305 race saver class. And, um, I think we're kind of pointing towards the direction of May 23rd and uh, and then August 8th, I think. So that'll be a real real cool deal. We're real excited to work with them guys. I think uh, they got a pretty good thing going on with that 305 race saver class. And uh, we'll, of course, have some specials with the Super Late Models will run the fair show. Um, SLMR, and then uh, I think we'll also have oh the Nebraska 360s with that. So. Oh, cool! Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a good schedule for you guys this year. Um, another, uh, just kind of one question I was, I was thinking about as I was getting ready for the show today. Uh, what do you think is going to be your biggest challenge taking over at uh, at Boone County Raceway? My biggest challenge uh, looking in 2014. Is just getting everybody confident that we're in this for them. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? As far as the racers goes, uh, it's just we got to get the confidence to these racers and get them back to the track. I mean, because honestly, if we don't have the racers in the pits, we don't have fans in the stands. Right. So ultimately, we got to get back to the grassroots of this thing and and make sure that we're getting people in the pits to put on a show for the for the fans. Uh, and you're gonna be, you've got your your payout schedule or scale worked out quite yet, or again, am I asking a premature <clears throat> question? <laughs> no, uh, we kind of have uh, a lot of that done up. Uh, modifieds, we got a real cool deal with the IMCA Modifieds right now. We got a, a special anonymous sponsor that's going to do a, a perfect attendance deal for us okay. on the last Friday of every Friday every month. So the last Friday of every month. We're going to have um, an extra three hundred dollars goes towards the winner if they have perfect attendance. So that that right there, that's seven hundred fifty dollars. The mods are going to pay four hundred fifty to win and a hundred dollar tow. Mm-hmm. So I think if we can pull twelve to fifteen A mods, that's a pretty good show. And we're going to that's kind of our goal right now, just to get the A mods belt back up and show 
show the racing community that they're still alive and still out there. That, that's a that's an interesting way of doing the, the perfect attendance. Most, if I'm remembering right, most tracks uh, pay it out at the end of the year, and you've got to come to all all nights. But this right. is uh, is it just by the month? Uh, so if it, you know for that four weeks leading up to that final Friday of the month, you've got to be there every month, or is yep. it throughout yep. the entire year? Yep. Um, we're going to tr- probably do it throughout the entire year. We're still working on the final details of that. Um, but, uh, if the winner doesn't have perfect attendance, that $300 will go down to all the A featured drivers that do have perfect attendance. So let's say there's 10 perfect attendance guys in that A feature and the winner didn't have perfect attendance. You know, that's $30 that'll be paid down to each driver. So I see. That's a pretty good bonus for... For that. You know, I think that, yeah, I, I really do like that system. I think that's a good idea you got going there. You know, we, we tried our, our darndest to figure out what we needed to do to get our AMOD count has been down up there. Um, and so we just kind of figured that we needed to focus on what we needed to do to bring them guys back up to Albany. Mm-hmm. We love seeing the modified race. I love, you know, that's kind of our grassroots is watching the modified and giant jet and all them good guys, Dylan Smith, and all them guys coming up and racing with us. So. Remind me once again, what's the A mod payout? Let's talk about that. So we're going to get more of those guys to come up there. It's four hundred and fifty dollars to win each night, and then it's a hundred dollars tow money. So if uh, any, you know, basically, if you get twenty, if you're going to get hundred bucks, okay. you know what I mean? Or, yep. So it that's that's the thing that we kind of we thought would help entice people to come up from even farther away. You know. What's uh, a Facebook page, website, somewhere people can go to to keep up to date with uh, Boone County Raceway? Um, our website's under construction, but they're still they're, we're putting updates on it every every time we got something new mm-hmm. coming out at www.boonecountyraceway.com. Okay, and then uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Boone County Raceway. All right, man. Hey, best of luck to you in 2014. Uh, thanks again for uh, for stepping up and purchasing the track. And uh, again, I can't say it enough. Best of luck to you uh, for uh, for helping us out. No problem. Thanks for having me. Kirk Westring of now called Boone County Raceway. Kirk, thanks so much for your time and uh, enjoy your, the rest of your weekend. You too. Again, BooneCountyRaceway.com is the website. You can also find them on Facebook to get a full schedule. Once they get all that posted payouts, uh, they're going to race on Friday nights. You'll get uh, Green Flag and uh, Gates Times at their uh, website and Facebook page once they get all that stuff updated. Kurt Westring of what is called now Boone County Raceway, formerly Albion Raceway, joining us here on the front stretch. We're going to be back here in a few minutes to kick off our Legends of the Dirt Series week number, gosh, we have all the way up to week number three. John Anderson's going to join us as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series brought to you by Kaziski Auto Parts. We'll be right back here on the front stretch on AM 590 Omaha's ESPN Radio. It's back again this year. Make memories at Quicker Steak and Lube on Monday, December 16th and have dinner with Santa. Mr. and Mrs. Claus love the lube and your family will too with free photos with Santa and the kids could win one of three Razor scooters we're giving away. Don't forget, stock up on the lube gift cards, the perfect stocking stuffer. Dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Claus, Monday, December 16th from 5 until 8 p.m. And don't forget, kids eat free with an adult purchase. Quaker Stick and Lube, next to the Mid-America Center, Council Bluffs. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. Time to grab another tear-off and make your move. We're headed into turn three on the front stretch, presented by Joe's Carding. Heading into turn three, and we're ready to continue our Legends of the Dirt series. We're going to talk now with John Anderson right here in Omaha. John, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you having me on. John, uh, you started your 25-year career uh, Friday Night Flyers at Eagle Raceway. Can you talk about the start of it all? (laughs) Yeah, that's been a while, huh? Yeah, that sure was. That was back in the day. What year was that? Wow. Ah, ooh, you stumped me. I don't know. Because I, I was in the ago. Friday Night Flyers, and I, I started racing in 94. 
Yeah, I think this was uh, late 80, maybe early 90. I, I started, uh, I think it was pro in like 92 or something. Wow, I'd have to, you're jogging my memory there. Well, I got to ask the question then, because obviously, I, you know, I've only been in dirt track for a couple of years. What, what is the Friday Night Flyers? It's just like a old, it's just like the hobby stocks of today. But, okay. You know, probably a little more, a uh, little older than, or not as nice, I guess. No. My car was a 77 Monte Carlo, and you know how big them are. So. <laughs> I didn't realize you could race boats Where's like that. that. Uh, let's uh, we'll move on throughout your career. You, you moved to the Pro-Am class over at uh, Sunset Speedway. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I only done it one year, and uh, um, me and Jeff Fallon, neither one of us won an A feature, and he finished first in points, and I finished second in points, and that was kind of crazy. I won the rookie of the year that year with it as well, and um, race at Sunset Speedway. Geez, that, I think that was 92, if I'm not mistaken. Was that the same year that you debuted? Uh, I was just telling Dan before we uh, called you. Was that the same year that you had that uh, that mooing cow horn on your truck? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that. <laughs> That's been on a few haulers. Wow, that is back in the day. Yeah, that that was a lot of fun. I was actually about 10 years old, and I remember hearing that, that big cow horn and <laughs> wondering where in the world the stampede was coming, and here you come by with your Camaro. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. going back some years. That's definitely going back some years. And then uh, uh, my girlfriend, or wife at the time, uh, or wife or girl, anyway, she ended up being my wife. They They started with cowbells and all that at Eagle, so. It all tied it all together. We're just we're just from from Nebraska. I mean, that's what we do, right? <laughs> How about we talk about the start of the career? What got you started with the Friday Night Flyers, eventually the Pro Ams, and moving on up? How how did you get started in dirt racing? Well, I uh, started helping a friend of mine, Joe Dotsler. Um, I went to school with his brother Andy, and uh, he raced the Pro Am class. And I started helping him uh, for a few years, and. Uh, dummy me thought I could do it, and me and a buddy of mine got together and did it, and that's how it got started. You moved to late models when uh, John of Little Sunset, uh, excuse me, when uh, Larry Kelly, owner of Sunset Speedway, asked you to sit down a late model, and you raced it for a couple of years, but then you went to a modified. I guess my perception, is that a little bit of backwards? Well, uh, you know, back then, not, not really. Uh, it was a weekly Sunset deal, which was Absolutely hard, yeah, and you're, you are right. That that was really tough to do. And uh, I raced for Larry for a couple of years, and then I started racing for Kyle Gertis. Uh, he started in the mods, or he wanted me to just drive his car there at the end of the year, and then I drove uh, uh, another modified for two lots at a time. Um, and, then, and then we started racing the mod a few times, and he wanted to race that whole us mts tour the next year and uh larry wanted to concentrate on some other things and so it just kind of fit that i started driving the mod but it was a traveling series so it wasn't quite weekly um so that's what i did and then from there we moved up into the open late models one rookie of the year when uh when you ran in the us mts obviously your first year uh get any wins have some success yeah, we uh, I, I didn't win any races there, but yeah, we had a lot of top fives. Um, I didn't win any USMTS races. I won once my MCA races. I won the Spring Nationals down at Beatrice, which is a big, big event there at the first of the year. For and back then, it was five thousand win. That was a lot of money. Still is today, but uh, but I ran uh, third. I think third in points maybe in the USMTS and. Uh, uh yeah, didn't didn't win any any of those though. No, I did not. Two years later, Gertis wanted you to step up to late models and uh, run in the Have a Tampa series, and uh, you, uh, you reluctantly agreed. And then the story Lee Ackerman told us was that you pulled up next to a big orange rig. Yeah, sure did. Yep, Rick Eckert down in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, he uh, he didn't waste any time. He just. Uh, Threw, threw me right there to the wolves, and, uh, you know, we did the best we could there and, and uh, you know, had some good runs in there. Finished uh, sixth at Cedar Lake, the USA Nationals. That was pretty fun one time. Uh, fourth when they had it at I-80 back in the day. I don't know what year that was, but, uh, yeah, we started doing that, and uh, 
weren't able to finish off the whole tour, you know, probably bit off a little more than we could chew. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of great people that I still talk to today. How much was Eckert uh, uh, helping you along the way to kind of show you the ropes a little bit? You know, that was really crazy because for us, you know, we're a spec tire area and we went to open tires and, you know, we parked next to him, just luckily parked next to him. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into going from race to race to race, uh, be it anywhere from travel to where to stay to uh, all kinds of different things you don't even think of. And, you know, he just said, follow us. And we just caravan just like a carnival and we were part of it and, park next to him, you know, just at least showing us the basics of where to start out, you know, uh, for the night and, uh, and, and just invaluable information that way. Just, just to, so we're not, so we're already behind cause those guys are so good. And, uh, for him just to get us started, uh, you know, saved us lots and lots of learning curves for sure. We're talking with John Anderson uh, here on the front stretch on AM590. John, Buddy Ray here. When, when you started racing that Hava Tampa and Rick Ecker, you know, shows up and parks next to you, being new to the series, what kind of pressure did that, did that put on your shoulders? Were you kind of freaking out a little bit, or is it just, you know, life goes on? Well, no, no. Yeah, it was definitely, I was nervous about that, you know, if you will. I don't know if it's nervous or anxiety or what, but yeah, it was definitely pressure the whole time, you know, because it's not just Ecker. You can just look down the road. All those guys that have won many, many championships. That's who we were racing against uh, nationally and, and regionally. And uh, yeah, he was just, uh, you know, they're, they're a lot of fun. And and that's what we had. was a, We had a, such a great time. We tell stories. I tell my son and his friends about these stories all the time. And they're just, they're just just great memories of of all that, but yeah, it was it was definitely a a eye opening tough experience because you roll into a new track, they give you a few muddy hot laps and send you out to a time trial, and suddenly you get going, and it's just bam, 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 quick, and you better figure it out, or you're going to be watching a lot of a features. You used the term, you got kind of thrown to the wolves. Was it a little overwhelming with, I mean, you just said it here, you look down the row of all these guys that were lining up, all these past champions, all these tough competitors. Did you stop and think, oh my God, am I ever going to win? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm I'm really not that competitive of a guy, to be quite honest. Um, you know, unless I really am up there battling for the lead. And, uh, you know, of course you want to win. And, you know, Kyle wants to, Kyle, who I was driving for, wanted to win, and my crew and everybody involved. You know, but we had it in perspective. You're not just going to go out here and beat these professionals like this. Um, so we looked more for making shows and, and getting good top ten runs and being competitive because, just like you said, if Rick Eckers off one night and Billy Moore is off the next night, uh, you know, there's four or five guys that step right in. You're not going to beat them all, especially starting out. And and uh, that was that was part of our mindset through the whole thing because we you know we wanted to learn and and get better at it. John, you and I have both been racing for a long, long, long time. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of people come and go in this sport. They they couldn't make it for a year or two for whatever reason. They couldn't make it five years. But in your situation, where you stepped up to the Hava Tampa late models, and you're running against all these champions, even when you came back home, at what point did you say, "Okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do"? When did that happen for you? For me, I've always raced for the camaraderie of it all. And, 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 uh, you know, and that's one thing I learned out on the road, uh, just the camaraderie of the crew and whoever you're driving for, or if, even when I had my own team, uh, you know, to, to compete and, you know, try and make it up. And none of us are getting rich trying to do it part time. You know, those full time guys aren't getting rich at it, but you know, some of them are very successful, uh, but you just can't burn yourself out and you got to kind of pick and choose and, and learn along the way. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I ever dreamed of, uh, of doing what I've done with, with the open light model. You know, I, if I did, I would have paid attention a long time ago of how things were, uh, you know, to, to keep on technology edge and, 
everything involved. And I just decided to surround myself with good people and uh, that had the same common goal of helping out. And it's just unbelievably worked for me. Everybody can remember their first win. It's just burned into your memory. Can you tell us about your first win? You know, I uh, as far as like flyers and things like that, I I, I don't quite remember. Um, but but to be quite honest, one I really remember a lot is my first race at Sunset. You know, Sunset was so big; we miss it so much. I know there's a lot of people out there that do. And my first late model race was uh, I won the B, and Dwight Rick got second. And we come up through the field. It was a rough track. We didn't know any better. And we, me and him battled for the lead. He won, and I got second. And that was our very first race as rookies. We raced for rookie of the year in that, that year uh, against each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with, with what happened to Dwight and, and all that, you know, I always remember that because it, it, was a, it was a great race, and there was two rookies at Sunset against those people. That was crazy. Are you going to join us for the walk down Sunset Lane? Uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'm not a whole lot familiar with all of it, but well, it anything did, to do with, go ahead. Uh, don't worry. We, we just announced it a couple of weeks ago, so I'll give you the details again. We're going to go down to Quaker Steak and Lube in Council Bluffs on, uh, uh January 22nd. And uh, we're going to record the show like it was live, and we're going to talk with Craig Kelly, and we're going to get interviews with, uh, I think Stan Caesar is going to join us. We're going to talk with a lot of different drivers and promoters and fans who can share memories of their f- favorite times at Sunset. And, and we'd love to have you come down and join us for a little bit. Yeah, you know what? If I'm uh, 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 if I'm not racing in Arizona and I'm back, I- I'd sure like that. I mean, I we. We have uh, those types of talks amongst all of us that have been there all the time, you know, but but to share with other people and listen to other stuff, heck yeah, that sounds like a great time. Well, we're going to continue on, uh, take a quick break, and we'll come back to continue talking with John Anderson as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series, brought to you by Kaziski Auto Parts, online at KaziskiAutoParts.com. We'll be right back. We have all been there before. Broken car part in your hand and some snot-nosed punk behind the counter has no idea what he's talking about, but he guarantees that this part will fix your car. You pay an arm and a leg for the replacement, get it home, and sure enough, it doesn't fit your car. Now, learn from your mistake and give an experienced salesperson at Kasiski Auto Parts a call today at 402-731-4592. Kasiski Auto Parts will get you back on the road with your arms and legs still attached. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. Get ready for the victory lap as we make our way into turn four on the front stretch. Presented by Joe's Karting. Online at joeskarting.com. About ready to wrap this baby up. We're heading into turn four, continuing our Legends of the Dirt series. Brought to you by Kaziski Auto Parts, 731-4592 for a quality used parts backed by team prp give andrew joe everyone over a call at kaziski auto parts uh a call today to pick up your quality used parts uh radio or uh, alternators they go out all the time especially on cars that are over 10 years old and there's no sense in going into an auto parts force store spending 60 70 bucks when you can go down to kaziski auto parts and get one for half price hey another part that goes out all the time and i know jack Transmissions. Yeah, they, they, they especially have for Dodges, they go out a lot. <laughs> and we're continuing our conversation with John Anderson as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series. Uh, John, in 2007, um, actually, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. You know, you raced with uh, Gertis uh, for a few years, and then you went off on your own with Larry Mooring and, and Bill Coons, and, and you struggled financially, but right in the middle of the offseason, when 06 ended and 07 was about to begin, you met up with Greg Youngers. Young young hands. Can you talk about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I just just like when I started open late late mile racing, you know, you you meet people and you talk to them, and I had talked to him before, and uh, you know, I'd have never thought that uh, at the end of 2006, you know, I was just financially 
wasn't going to make it anymore, and I really had to make some tough decisions. And I talked to him about racing, uh, you know, and it just so happened his driver was leaving, and he had a team in, uh, uh, you know, that was leaving. And so he had the equipment but no team, and I had a team but no equipment. So it was a perfect deal. I went down there and met with him and his wife, and we, we talked about what we wanted to do and accomplish, and it just kind of took off from there. 14 wins, 34 top fives, and 39 top tens in just 42 starts in 07. I think it's safe to say you guys had a good chemistry going there. Yeah, it was it was crazy. I mean, it, it, everything just worked, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was great. That's, that's what started us off uh, to, to race for a good many years. It was a great year for sure. That was the year that you led a majority of the uh, Diamond Nationals at the uh, Lucas Oil okay. Speedway. You were Is this kind of a bitter memory? You mean to not quite ask uh, about this? <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't. Uh, <laughs> so back there when I was telling you when you're following Rick Eckert along and, and you run sixth, at, uh, I run sixth at the, at the USA Nationals. I thought, man, if five people had a flat tire, I could have won this thing. And you really think that that's the closest you're ever going to get to those things, racing them guys. And when I was leading that thing and, and uh, um, you know, against that, that, the whole crowd, uh, you know, and I, I really thought I was going to win. And uh, just to even run second was, was an accomplishment. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a bittersweet one that, you know, the chance of you, uh, us as a regional team against the national guys on a big stage like that, you know, them opportunities don't come very often. And, you know, I surely wish we would have capitalized on it. You won the MLRA championship in 08, 2011, and uh, 2012. And during that time, you helped tutor Young young Hands' two sons. Mm -hmm. uh, Talk about uh, kind of working with those two and kind of passing on what Rick Eckhart did for you. Yeah, and and that's what it is. Like like I said, it's it's more than just uh, driving. It's it's just about preparation. It's it's about when do you need to leave to go to the races? When do you, what what's going to happen when you get there? You know, overcoming the adversity because you're faced with that all the time, um, be it a bad draw or a bad lap or whatever it is, and and try and get the most out of what your night is, you're faced with. And you know, I, I believe that's helped quite a bit in, in both of them, uh, and and hopefully that serves them well coming up. If you were to compare yourself to like a modern NASCAR driver, and I think I, I, I pretty much know where you're going to go with it, but I just want to hear it from you. You talked about how you're not a real competitive person until you're put in that switch situation where you can grab the win. Uh, would you who would you compare yourself to as a NASCAR driver? Oh boy, I don't know. Them guys are <laughs> way way above and beyond what I can imagine. But uh, I guess what I'm asking is like your driving style. Yeah. Um, I, I would say more like Matt Kenseth, actually. Hmm. I just kind of laid back, kind of hanging out there until the end and try and go for it, really. Uh, he's not necessarily my favorite driver, but, you know, you really don't hear about him till the end, and that's probably about where I would be. Who is your favorite driver? Well, I mean, I have a few of them there. I mean, I like Jeff Gordon just by what he's accomplished, um, you know, it's hard to take away from Jimmy Johnson. I hate to pick the champion. That, that the was time, my but. vote. I thought you'd be more like, yeah. you would be the Jimmy Johnson uh, of the dirt track in the late models. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, them guys are all talented. And when when you can, when they go out and they do like that prelude to the dream, because, you know, I'm, I'm a 100% dirt guy. Mm-hmm. So when those guys just, just jump in those cars and compete, it's crazy to me that they can beat some of the best in our business. And, and those guys are definitely talented. Uh, kind of getting a little bit of sidetracked here, but I just want to pick your brain real quick. You know, we obviously earlier this year had the big um, uh, Mud Summer Classic, the the trucks on yeah. dirt. Uh, if you were ever given an opportunity to race a truck at Eldora or at a dirt track, would you jump at it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um Anytime you get an opportunity like that, and you know, like I talked before, I've been faced with some opportunities in my life uh, with racing, and and I felt like I'd done the best I could to jump at those, and and that's definitely one I would really move the schedule around to jump for, for sure. 
You have been very active uh, in uh, in your church and with the Faith Youth Team. Uh, Lee Ackerman was telling me a story in, uh, I believe it was 2007. You raced at Hutchinson, Kansas on a Friday night. And then you went up to Dodge City and raced on a Saturday night. Drove six and a half hours back to Omaha to attend one of your baptisms, uh, a baptism for one of your four youth group kids. And then you grabbed a quick nap and then headed to Heartland Park in Topeka where you ended up winning the feature. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, it, it's it's a good story, but, you know, a lot of people do a lot of things. And, uh, you know, I, I invest a lot of my time and life in, in some of these kids. And uh, when they decide to do something important like that, you know, I do the best of my ability to get there to support them. And, uh, you know, just it just worked out. I just had to drive a little more that night, you know. But there is plenty of people driving back and forth through the night and just that to get, get to certain events that they need to be at. Uh, and, and it's really neat to see. How, uh, how big has your faith been in your, uh, racing career since, you know, the 1950s when you drove Friday night flyers? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I got a great, great church that I go to and, and my wife's real active and me and my wife make a great team at it. And, uh, Right now, we have a college group that we meet, um, and and it's great. You know, uh, it's 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 definitely special, but nothing special. And when you get fifteen to twenty to twenty five kids on a college night that they can have plenty of things they want to go do, but they decide to come to my house, you know, it's pretty neat. And I take it I take it pretty serious. And uh, luckily enough that you know we got some support along the way that that help us to do that. So. Uh, it's it's pretty important, and, and as far as the racing goes, you know, that I think it definitely um, keeps me in a mental state that that I can handle the adversity well, and uh, definitely helps in situations for sure. Now, the world could definitely use more people like you that uh, that are mentoring and helping raise the youth. Uh, absolutely, uh, John. Yeah. During your career, you've got 150 wins, five track championships. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at some of the stats. A Friday night flyer championship at Eagle, a grand national title at Sunset, three late model championships at Park Jefferson uh, up there in South Dakota. Then you've won a bunch of big races. If if there's one race or one championship that sticks out, what would it be and why? Well, um, you know, NASCAR, when, when we raced weekly, you know, we build up and had a lot of people involved, a lot of friends and a lot of support at the races and made it a lot of fun. And those NASCAR regional deals, um, you know, those, those were, those were pretty good. Cause there was, you know, it was our first deal and our first championship and our first taste of taking all my sponsors down to Daytona or, or to Orlando or, or to Nashville and go to those banquets and seeing that, man, our accomplishments were really big considering on the grand stage of the whole nation and we're right up amongst the best of them. And we're just a couple knuckleheads out in the backyard making the car go. It was crazy to, crazy to me. Was there a scariest moment you experienced in a, uh, in a dirt car? Uh, probably at Alta, Iowa. I destroyed a car. I mean, it, there's pictures of it and everything. I flipped it, I don't know, three or four times, but what was crazy about it is I remember it. And I remember Kenny Schrader telling me back in the day, if you ever get off the ground, just grab the underside of the wheel and tuck your head and and go for the roll. And it was crazy that I could think that when I was rolling and bouncing off the ground and back up in the air. And I thought I was completely okay the whole time. Uh, and I and I got out of the car on my own and everything was fine. And when the Dirt Way Model magazine comes out a, a, a month later, I'm out of the car with my helmet on. And I, to me, I remember taking my helmet off when I was in the car, but obviously that's not what happened. So that was kind of crazy, and it it was a tough wreck. You know, there's a lot of uh, focus being paid attention to right now about concussions. Obviously, the NFL has spearheaded that a lot the last few years. NASCAR is beginning to legislate some uh, concussion testing. Just out of simple curiosity, you know, you, you told that story. I'm sure you banged your head a couple of times. Have you ever felt like maybe you you did really do some damage and you're suffering from some of the consequences or suffering some of the after effects? Uh, you know, not not so much. I, I haven't really uh, 
had any issues with that, that, that I feel other than what I just alluded to there, but, uh, any concussions or anything like that? No, I, I haven't. And then the safety equipment, I wear a Hans device and I got a full containment seat. And, uh, you know, some of those things have really gotten a lot better for our industry. And, and I, I'm sure that's what cuts down on a lot of, a lot of issues. All right, John, I think we've uh, taken enough of your time. We do appreciate you joining us as a part of the Legends of the Dirt series. Uh, we hope you do join us at Quaker State and Lumen Council Bluffs Wednesday, January 22nd for the uh, Walk Down Sunset Lane. We're going to talk to a bunch of fans, drivers, and promoters about their time at Sunset. I appreciate it. I appreciate the show you guys are doing here to, to, to keep racing in the forefront. That's awesome with me because I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. I'm a, I'm a junkie for racing. Oh, so. thank, thank you. That's great. Thank you. All right, and that was John Anderson again, uh, big-time driver right here, part of the Legends of the Dirt Series. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to be joined by another John, but it's going to be the Jet. Johnny, the Jet sat off. He's going to join us for the Legends of the Dirt Series, and uh, you heard us talk about it with John Anderson. Make sure you mark your calendars. Man, if you haven't ever gotten to see John Anderson race, you're, you're missing out. I've missed out on a lot. I, we, yeah, yeah I, well, I, I didn't get to see we ain't got enough time season. to go into just how much you've missed out on. But I tell you what, John Anderson, Kelly Bowen going at it back and forth at ID Speedway. And then you throw another legend that we talked to last year. We got Kelly Bone, John Anderson. Now we got Kyle Burke. Yeah. I mean, this guy is coming from what I call the attitude era in the 90s. Where, I mean, it's not like what it was in the 60s and 70s, but in the 90s, you had to be tough. You had to have a thick skin. Mm-hmm. And it, it's weird to hear that, you know, well, I'm, I'm not really worried about being competitive because, well, you sure as hell could surprise me. Because <laughs> when, when I see John Anderson... He ain't no slouch. He's fast. Yeah. I I think what he was kind of alluding to there was that he wouldn't push the subject if he didn't have the car. And some drivers just don't understand that. They'll push the subject and then they'll end, get, end up getting into a wreck. And I think that's what he was saying was that if he had the car, yeah, he would push it. But he wasn't a super competitive guy. He was just dang good. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, Johnny Sadoff. We'll do it next weekend for the Legends of the Dirt Series presented by Kaziski Auto Parts. Thank you so much for joining us on the front stretch on AM 590 Omaha's ESPN Radio. It's back again this year. Make memories at Quicker Steak and Lube on Monday, December 16th and have dinner with Santa. Mr. and Mrs. Claus love the lube and your family will too with free photos with Santa. And the kids could win one of three Razor scooters we're giving away. Don't forget, stock up on the lube gift cards. The perfect stocking stuffer. Dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Claus Monday, December 16th from 5 until 8 p.m. And don't forget, kids eat free with an adult purchase. Quaker Stick and Lube next to the Mid-America Center, Council Bluffs. Are you ready for fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping, wheel-to-wheel racing right here in the Metro? Get to Joe's Karting in Council Bluffs and see what it's like to race real go-karts. Joe's Karting knows it's no fun to race go-karts at 10 miles per hour, so they ripped the governors out, and now the only restriction is how good you are at racing. It's full-throttle, white-knuckle racing every day of the week. Head over to joeskarting.com for hours, prices, and specials, or give Buddy a call today and set up your group races at 712-256-5278. 